morning this is dr padma assistant professor department of physics institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad in the previous session we discussed about the energy band diagram on fermi level in the intrinsic semiconductors today we are going to discuss about the energy band diagram on fermi level in extrinsic semiconductors these are the topics to be covered in this section fermi level in n type semiconductor fermi level in p type semiconductor effect of temperature on extrinsic semiconductor conductivity of metals conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor so energy band diagram on fermi level in extrinsic semiconductor in extrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons in the conduction band and the number of holes in the valence band are not equal whereas in intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons n equal to the number of holes in intrinsic semiconductor number of electrons are equal to number of holes but in extrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons is not equal to number of holes so in intrinsic in extrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons in the conduction band uh, and the number of holes in the valence band are not equal hence the probability of occupation of energy levels in conduction band and valence band are not equal that means for example this is conduction band this is valence band so in extrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons in the conduction band is not equal to the number of holes in the valence band so that's why the probability of occupying occupation of the energy level in ec is not equal to the occupation of energy level in ev hence the probability of occupation of energy level in conduction band and valence band are not equal therefore the fermi level for the extrinsic semiconductor lies close to either conduction band or valence band for example in intrinsic semiconductor this is conduction band this is valence band so in intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons is equal to the number of electrons are equal to number of holes that's why the fermi level lies in between the conduction band and valence band <laughs> whereas in extrinsic semiconductor so the probability of occupation of energy levels in the conduction band and uh, the probability of occupation of energy level in valence band are not equal that's why in in fermi level uh, that's why in extrinsic semiconductor the fermi level is either close to conduction band or either close to valence band for example maybe the uh, fermi level may be exist at the bottom of the conduction band or maybe it exist on the top of the valence band that is depending upon the type of the semiconductor so in n type semiconductor pentavalent impurity is added each pentavalent impurity donates a free electron so the addition of the pentavalent impurity creates a large number of free electrons in the conduction band for example in types of semiconductors in extrinsic semiconductors are two types those are first one is the n type semiconductor second one is the p type semiconductor so n type semiconductor means we are adding pentavalent impurities to the either silicon or germanium crystal it forms the n type semiconductor for example silicon crystal we are adding fifth group elements fifth group elements mean just like a phosphorus arsenic antimony so these are having pentavalent uh, uh, five valence electrons in the outermost orbit but silicon is having only four valence electrons so we are adding arsenic into silicon crystal see arsenic is having five valence electrons in the outermost orbit so in five electron in out of five electrons four valence electrons are forming the covalent bonds with the silicon crystal so here one excess electron is there that electron is known as the donor electron so in n type semiconductor if the pentavalent impurities is added to so pure semiconductor it gives n type semiconductor so each pentavalent impurity each arsenic atom donates one electron so the addition of pentavalent impurity creates a large number of free electrons in the conduction band at a room temperature the number of electrons in the conduction band is greater than the 
number of holes in the valence bond why because here we are adding pentavalent group elements pentavalent means it has five valence electrons so out of five valence electrons four valence electrons are forming covalent bond with the silicon crystal here one more excess electron is there this excess electron is behaving as the free electron so at room temperature the number of electrons in the conduction band is greater than the number of holes in the valence band and the probability of the uh, probability of occupation of energy levels by electrons in the conduction band is greater than the probability of occupation of energy levels by the holes in the valence band so the probability of for example this is conduction band this is valence band here at room temperature the number of electrons in the conduction band is greater than the number of holes in the valence band that's why the probability of occupation of electrons in the conduction band is more compared to valence band so that's why the uh, fermi level existing may very closer to the conduction band so the probability of occupation of energy levels is represented in terms of fermi level so the fermi level in the n type semiconductor lies closest to the conduction band for example this is conduction band this is valence band already we know that at room temperature the number of electrons in the conduction band is more compared to number of uh, uh, holes in the valence band so the probability of occupying energy states in the conduction band is more that's why here the that it can be represented in terms of fermi level the fermi level lies very closer to the conduction band so the fermi level for n type semiconductor is given as ef equal to ec minus kbt log nc by nd where ef is the fermi level ef is the fermi level kb is the boltzmann constant boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature nc is the nc is the effective density of states in the conduction band and nd is the concentration of donor atoms so the fermi level for n type semiconductor is given as ef equal to ec minus kbt log nc by nd where ef is the fermi level ec is the in a, in a conduction band energy kb is the boltzmann constant t is the absolute temperature nc is the Uh, effective density of states in the conduction band nd is the concentration of the donor atoms so this is the energy band diagram of the fermi level in n type semiconductor here we observe that the top most uh, the top most band is the conduction band and bottom is the valence band so this is ec this is ev so the fermi level the probability of occupying the electrons in the conduction band is more uh, compared to the occupation of electrons in the conduction band is more compared to valence band that's why here the fermi level is closest to the conduction band compared to valence band whereas in intrinsic semiconductor so this is conduction band this is valence band here number of electrons are equal to number of holes that's why the fermi level existing in between the conduction band and valence band but in the case of n type semiconductor the probability of occupying the energy states in the conduction band is more compared to valence band that's why the fermi level existing closest to the conduction band compared to valence band then second one is fermi level in p type semiconductor so in p type semiconductor trivalent impurity is added so in p type semiconductor means third group elements third group elements for example boron aluminum gallium is added to silicon or germanium silicon or germanium then it gives the p type semiconductors so p type semiconductor means those are having acceptor type impurities acceptor type impurities so in p type semiconductor for example silicon silicon is having four valence electron so we are adding aluminum or gallium into the silicon crystal so these are the third group elements third group elements are having only three valence electrons so 
here these three valence electrons are forming with the covalent bonds with the other silicon uh, crystals here one more uh, here one uh, one more electron is required to form the complete covalent bond so that is called hole hole is always ready to accept the electron so the addition of trivalent impurity creates a large number of holes in the valence band compared to electrons in the conduction band so in p type semiconductor trivalent impurity is added each trivalent impurity creates a hole in the valence band and ready to accept an electron so the addition of trivalent impurity creates a large number of holes in the valence band but at room temperature the number of holes in the valence band is greater than the number of electrons in the conduction band at room temperature the number of electro the number of holes the number of holes means p is greater than the number of electrons in at room temperature so that's why here the probability of occupation of energy level by the holes in the valence band is greater than the probability of the occupation of the energy levels by the electrons in the conduction band so here the probability of occupation of energy levels so here the number of holes are greater than the number of electrons in the conduction band that's why here the probability of the occupation of energy levels by the holes in the valence band is more compared to the probability of the occupation of the energy levels in the conduction band for example this is conduction band this is valence band here the number of holes are occupied in the energy levels of the valence band compared to conduction band so here the number of holes are more than the number of electrons that's why the energy levels are occupied by the holes are more compared to and the energy levels occupied by the electrons in the conduction band that's why here the fermi level lies very closest to the conduction band compared to valence band in the case of p type semiconductor so the probability of occupation of energy levels is represented in terms of fermi level therefore the fermi level in the p type semiconductor lies closest to the valence band compared to conduction band so the fermi level in p type semiconductor is uh, written as ef equal to ef equal to ev plus kbt log nv by na where nv is the effective density of states effective density of states in the valence band na is the acceptor carrier concentration so na is the concentration of acceptors so the fermi level for p type semiconductor can be written as ef equal to ev plus kbt into log nv by na where F, ef is the fermi level e is the valence band energy kb is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature nv is the effective density of states in the valence band na is the acceptor concentration so this is the energy band diagram in p type semiconductors so in p type semiconductor the the holes are occupied the more energy levels compared to conduction band so the holes are occupied more energy levels in the valence band compared to electrons occupied in the conduction band that's why here the fermi level is existing above the, just very close to the valence band compared to conduction band so in p type semiconductor this is conduction band this is a valence band the fermi level lies uh, uh, very close to the valence band compared to conduction band whereas in n type semiconductor for example this is conduction band this is valence band so the fermi level just uh, lies very closer to the conduction band so in p type semiconductor the fermi level existing bottom of the conduction band so bottom of the valence band so whereas in n type semiconductor the fermi level exist at the bottom of the conduction band whereas in p type semiconductor the fermi level exist on the top of the valence band so in n type semiconductor the fermi level exist just bottom of the 
bottom of the conduction band in p type semiconductor the fermi level exists on the top of the valence band so next topic is effect of temperature on extrinsic semiconductors so the addition of small amount of donor or acceptor impurity generate a large number of charge carriers in any extrinsic semiconductors so extrinsic semiconductor means we are adding any impurities to the uh, intrinsic semiconductors or pure semiconductor they will produce the extrinsic semiconductor due to the addition of small amount of either donor or acceptor impurities generates a large number of charge carriers in any extrinsic semiconductor due to this large number of charge carriers the conductivity of an extrinsic semiconductor is several times greater than that of the intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature 300 kelvin so compared to intrinsic semiconductors the extrinsic semiconductor has the more conductivity compared to intrinsic semiconductor why because here we are adding small amount of donor or acceptor impurities Due to this adding of small amount of donor and acceptor impurity generates a more number of charge carriers or large number of charge carriers. They will increase the conductivity of the intrinsic semiconductor. That's why here the extrinsic semiconductor has the large conductivity compared to intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature 300 Kelvin. All the donor atoms have already donated their free electrons at 300 Kelvin. The additional thermal energy produces the more number of charge carriers. Already donor atom, each donor atom donates one free electron. That's why here the number of electrons are more. So in addition to that, we are giving ther some thermal energy. Due to the thermal energy, it increases the number of charge carriers. So then by increasing, uh, by giving the thermal energy due to the thermal energy, the concentration of minority carriers are increases. The concentration of minority carriers are increases. When the temperature is reached to certain temperature, the number of covalent bonds broken and produces a large number of holes is nearly equal to the number of electrons. By giving to, by giving the additional thermal energy, additional thermal energy, it breaks the covalent bonds. It breaks the covalent bonds. So it breaks the covalent bonds and it produces the more number of charge carriers. More number of charge carriers. Due to these charge carriers, the number of holes will be equal to number of electrons. So due to the thermal energy, by increasing the temperature, uh, the covalent bonds are uh, the covalent bonds will be broken and produces the more number of charge carriers due to this thermal energy the number of holes are equal to the number of electrons so now the extrinsic semiconductor act like an intrinsic semiconductor with a higher conductivity so by giving the thermal energy due to the thermal energy covalent bond breaks and it produces the more number of charge carriers due to this more number of charge charge carriers means here the minority charge carriers are increased due to the increasing of minority charge carriers the number of holes are equal to the number of electrons in this case the extrinsic semiconductor also will be act as the intrinsic semiconductor so intrinsic semiconductor means here the number of holes are equal to number of electrons so here the critical temperature for silicon and germanium is 200 degrees and 85 degrees. Conductivity of metals. The conductivity of material is proportional to the number of free electrons. So the conductivity we can denote it as sigma. Sigma is proportional to the conductivity of material is always proportional to number of free electrons. The conductivity is always proportional to the number of free electrons. A constant electric field is, e is applied to any metal. The free electron would be accelerated and the velocity would be increases indefinitely with the time. If you give some electrical field is applied to the metal, then the free electrons would be accelerated and the velocity also increases indefinitely with the time. So electrons are losing energy because collision of electrons. 
A steady state conduction is uh, reached where a finite value of drift velocity Vd is attained. Here Vd is called drift velocity. Due to the collisions in between the electrons here, the drift velocity will be attained. The drift velocity Vd is opposite to, of the electric field and its magnitude is proportional to E. So the direction of the drift field Vd is opposite to the applying electric field but the magnitude is proportional to applied electric field. So the conductivity of material is always proportional to the number of free electrons. The conductivity of material is always proportional to the number of free electrons. A constant electric field is applied to any metal. The free electrons would be accelerated and the velocity also increases indefinitely with the times. So the electrons will lose energy due to the collision of electrons. At a steady state conduction is reached where the finite value of drift velocity Vd is attained by the electrons. The drift velocity Vd is opposite to the applied electric field but its magnitude is proportional to the applied electric field. So here Vd, Vd, Vd is proportional to E, Vd equal to mu into E, where mu is the mobility of electrons, mu is the mobility of electrons, that is meter square per volt second, those are the units for mobility. Due to the applied electric field, a steady state drift velocity has been superimposed upon the random thermal motion of the electrons. Such a directed flow of electrons constitutes a current. Due to the flow of electrons, it resumes the current. If the concentration of electron, free electrons is n, the concentration of free electrons is n, n means electrons per meter cube, the current density j is ampere per meter square. Current density j, current density means Current per unit volume per unit area is known as the current density. Current density can be denoted as J, where I is the current, A is the area. So, current density means the current per unit area is known as the current density, which is denoted as J. J units are ampere per meter square. Ampere per meter square. So, conductivity of metals. So, the current density J equal to NQ into VD. The current density J equal to NQ into VD. This is equation 2. From equation 1, J equal to NQ mu E. Why? Because VD equal to mu E. From equation 1, VD equal to mu E. So, the current density J equal to NQ into mu E. So, J equal to sigma E, where sigma equal to sigma value is NQ mu, NQ mu, where sigma is the conductivity of the metal, that is per ohm meter. Sigma is the conductivity of metal, that is per ohm meter, where N is the number of uh, electrons, Q is the charge of electron, mu is the mobility. So, the current density sigma equal to nq into mu. nq into mu. So the current density j equal to nq into v that is equation 2. But already we know that from equation 1 vd equal to mu into e where mu is the mobility. From equation 1 and 2 j equal to nq into mu e then j equal to sigma into e, where sigma value is n q into mu, where n is the number of electrons, q is the charge of electron, mu is the mobility. Then conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor. An intrinsic semiconductor behaves as a perfect insulator at a 0 Kelvin. So at a 0 Kelvin, intrinsic semiconductors are behaving as insulator because at a 0 Kelvin, the valence band remains full the conduction band is empty. So, this is valence band, this is conduction band. At 0 Kelvin temperature, the valence band is completely filled, completely filled, but the conduction band is empty. 
there are no free charge carriers to conduct the current so intrinsic semiconductor behaves as perfect insulator at 0 kelvin because at 0 kelvin the valence band remains full the valence band is completely filled uh, and uh, the conduction band is empty and there are no free charge carriers for the conduction but at room temperature 300 kelvin the thermal energy is sufficient to create a large number of electron hole pairs. So, intrinsic semiconductors at 0 Kelvin are behaving as insulator. Why? Because at 0 Kelvin, the valence band is completely filled with charge carriers and the conduction band is empty. So, there are no free charge carriers for the conduction. That's why at 0 Kelvin, intrinsic semiconductors are behaved as insulators. But at room temperature 300 Kelvin, the thermal energy is sufficient to create a large number of electron hole pairs. Now, if an electric field is applied, the current flows through the semiconductor. The current flows in the semiconductor due to the movement of electrons in one direction and holes in opposite directions. So, at room temperature 300 Kelvin, it has the sufficient thermal energy to create a large number of electrons and hole. So, electron hole pairs are generated in a large number. Now, if you apply the electric field E, the current flows through the semiconductor. The current flows in the semiconductor due to the movement of electrons in one direction. For example, electrons are moving in this direction, then holes are moving in the opposite direction. Conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor. So, the current density of a metal is J equal to NQ into mu. Already we know that. This is equation 1. The current density in a pure semiconductor due to the movement of electrons and holes is given by JN equal to QN mu N into E. Where Q is the charge, N is the number of electrons. Mu n is the mobility of the electrons, E is the electric field. So, similarly, for holes Jp equal to the equation can be written as Qp into mu p into E, where Q is the charge, P is the number of holes, mu p is the mobility of the holes, E is the electric field. So, where Q is the charge and the electron or hole, n is the electron's concentration. So, those are the equation for current density for electrons and current density for holes. For P is the holes concentration, E is the applied electric field, mu N is the mobility of the electron, mu P is the mobility of the holes. So, the total current density will be J equal to current density of electrons plus current density of holes, J equal to Jn plus Jp. From equation 2 and 3, we got the values for Jn and Jp. We can substitute the values in equation 4. We will get the current density J equal to Qn mu n e plus Qp mu p into e. So, where Qe is the common, Qe equal to n i mu n plus n i mu p. So, where j equal to sigma e, sigma e p into mu p. So, here sigma can be written as sigma equal to n into mu n plus p into mu p into q. So, the total current density j equal to j n plus j p. So, j n value is q n into mu n into e, j p value is q p into mu p into e. So, uh, QE into NI mu N plus NP mu P, where J equal to sigma P, where sigma value is N into mu N plus P into mu P into Q, where N is the number of electrons, mu N is the mobility of electrons, P is the number of holes, mu P is the mobility of the holes. So, sigma is the conductivity of the semiconductor. For pure semiconductor, Already we know that number of electrons is equal to the number of holes. That's why number of electrons n equal to number of holes p equal to we are assuming that value is ni. So, ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration. ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration. So, the current density j equal to q into ni mu n 
plus in the place of NP we are writing as N I mu P. So the conductivity of pure semiconductor will be sigma equal to Q into N I mu N plus N I mu P into E. So sigma equal to Q N I mu N plus mu P. So the conductivity of pure semiconductor depends upon its intrinsic semiconductor and the mobility of the electrons and holes. So conductivity of N type and P type semiconductors. So the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor is given by sigma equal to Q into N I mu N plus N I mu P. But already we know that the current density for electrons is Zn equal to Qn mu n into E. The current density for holes is Jp equal to Qn mu p into E. So, by putting n equal to p equal to Ni for in the case of intrinsic semiconductor. But in the case of n-type semiconductor, so in n-type semiconductors, the number of electrons is much greater than the number of holes. So, in n-type semiconductors, majority charge carriers are electrons, minority charge carriers are holes. So, in n-type semiconductors, the number of electrons is much greater than the number of holes. So, the conductivity of n-type semiconductor can be written as sigma equal to Qn into mu n. So, the conductivity for n-type semiconductor sigma equal to Qn into mu n. For p-type semiconductor, already we know that for p-type semiconductors, majority charge carriers are holes, minority charge carriers are electrons. So here the number of holes much greater than the number of electrons. So p is much greater than n. So the conductivity for the p-type semiconductor sigma equal to qp into mu p. Where q is the charge of the hole. P is the number of holes, mu P is the mobility of the holes. So for n-type semiconductor, n is much greater than P. So the conductivity of n-type semiconductor can be written as sigma equal to Qn into mu n. For P-type semiconductor, the number of holes much greater than the number of electrons. So the conductivity for the P-type semiconductor, sigma equal to Qp into mu p where q is the charge of the hole p is the number of holes mu p is the mobility whereas here q is the charge of electron n is the number of electrons mu n is the mobility of the electron so these are the references for the semiconductor physics and devices smg physics of semiconductor devices thank you like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.